Amiads are certainly beautiful fuzzy creatures who are so lovable and they like to try our patience. If you're thinking of getting one but haven't owned a Samiad, this video you don't want to miss. Up next on Yeti's Place. To find the best tips and tricks for owning a Samiad, be sure to hit subscribe, click that bell notification, check out our links down below, and drop Yeti and I a comment. Confined board Samiads are something that is absolutely not desirable. They are not beautiful Samiads when they're confined and bored. They're more like piranhas with indestructible teeth. When they're bored, they do not stop eating anything and everything. Furniture, shoes, windowsills, socks, clothing, walls, surround sound speakers, carpeting, you name it, they'll eat it. It's like they live in a gingerbread house. So Yeti's buddies, Quimby and Bigby, are prime examples. So Quimby and Bigby are both 10 years old. Yeti adores them. One weekend, we had Quimby and Bigby over at our house. Quimby and Bigby aren't walked as often as Yeti is, so they get a little bit bored. Even though when I, they come over to our house, they play nonstop with Yeti. They love playing with Yeti, they adore Yeti and they have a lot of fun. Well, one day, they got a little bit bored at our house, so they started chewing a hole in our wall. Yeah, a hole straight through the wall. This was a wall that was by our gas fireplace, and Quimby, that stinker, he chewed straight through the wall, and like leaving a hole like this big. Yeti's dad, my husband, had to patch it up. It was not good. <laughs> now the color of that, that patch doesn't match the rest of the wall, but at least there's not a big, giant, huge, massive hole in the wall, all because Quimby got bored. And then when Quimby got bored and started eating it, Bigby joined in, and then so did Yeti. All three dogs were working on chewing this giant hole in the wall. Because when one Sammy Ed gets bored, they all wanna check it out, and they all wanna see what that other bored Sammy Ed is doing, so then they all start contributing to that destructive behavior because they think, oh boy, you're having fun. I wanna have some fun too. So in Big B and Quimby's house, yeah, I'm talking about your buddies again. Their parents don't like to leave Quimby and Big B loose and free because of what they do with their teeth. They like to lock them up in their front entryway when they go to work. So they come home at lunchtime and one day they came home to a big, massive, huge, giant hole that was chewed through the wall. Of course, Quimby and Bigby did get in trouble. The next day, again, they were locked up, but this time their, their crate was moved up against that hole in the wall that they had been eating the day before to prevent them from eating more holes in the wall. So then they chose a new wall to chew a giant hole in. This time Quimby and Bigby were even in bigger trouble than they had been in the day before. So then the next day, when their parents went to work, well, they decided to separate both dogs because both dogs feed off of one another's negative energy and, and their chewing destructive behaviors. So Big B was put in his crate. Quimby was, of course, left out of the crate. Well, Quimby got a bit bored, so he started digging on stuff. Big B, in the meantime, wanted to contribute to that destructive behavior, so Big B was locked in his crate, of course, and he was trying to figure out, well, how in the world do I get out of here? So that Houdini dog figured out how to get out of his crate. He was like going back and forth, back and forth, and, and just kept moving back and forth to get the bottom tray to slide out from underneath the crate. And he slid it out from underneath the crate. Big B then picked up the crate using his mouth, flipped the crate over, and was free. So Big B was able to contribute to the stinker-filled activities that Quimby was doing. They were in the laundry room by the, where their water dish is kept and they decided to tear up the wooden floor and decided to eat another hole in the wall. Now these dogs are 10. Another time, their dad went down into the basement. Quimby and Big B, they wanted to really hang out with their dad in the basement. They, they couldn't get through the door because the door was closed. Quimby and Big B decided to, oh, let's eat a hole through the wall. They were able to jump through the hole in the wall to go downstairs to the basement. When their their human owner got out of the shower and left the bathroom, there was Quimby and Bigby right outside the bathroom door sitting there. <laughs> Needless to say, their owner was not happy. Bigby is getting a new crate. And he pulled yet another Houdini. So, so let's say that, that you own just one Sammy Ed and you're thinking that, oh my goodness, this is just such a special dog. I'd like to get another Sammy Ed. 
you know, and once you've gotten through those first two years of, of a Samoyed's life, because the first two years, they eat everything and anything, unless you walk them a lot and unless you play with them a lot and exhaust them a lot and you do a lot of YouTube filming and stuff that they're demanding to do. Then they get tired and then they do this. But this is only like this while we're in front of the camera, okay? This is not the case when we're not in front of the camera. Kitty barks at me all the time. Mom, can I have treats? Mom, I want to play fetch. Mom, can you bring me outside? Mom, 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 I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to be destructive dog instead. I'm going to do this and this and this. I'm going to eat this and I'm just going to be a destructive dog. So yeah, if you can get through those first two years of their lives and you're thinking that, okay, this dog is just the most precious dog ever. I'd like to get another one. So I'll have two Sammy Eds. <laughs> Sucker! <laughs> they will feed off of one another's destructive behaviors like you've never seen before in your life. Quimby and Big B are now 10 years old and they still feed off of one another's destructive behaviors. When I owned my first Sammy Ed, Chewy. I didn't know that Chewy needs to be walked on a few long walks every day and that Chewy needs a lot of playtime. So Chewy literally ate my whole house. He ate the baseboard trim. He ate the window sills. He ate our surround sound speakers. He ate my furniture. He ate everything. My house was a gingerbread house to this dog. And it wasn't until he hit two years old that I finally figured out that, oh, maybe I should walk him twice a day every day for long walks each time, at least twice a day. Because, well, the playing with him didn't, didn't help tire him out. But the walking, that helped. Then when I got Yeti, of course, I knew how to work with the Sammy Ed breed and I knew that I should bring him on a lot of walks every day to keep him active and tire him out. Sammy Eds need to be in crates until they're two years old. Anytime that you're not in the same room with your dog, anytime that you have to leave home, put your Sammy Ed in a crate for the safety of your house. Just be sure to let your dog out of their crate when you come home from work or when you come home from running errands or wherever you are. And then if you're home, of course, you can leave them out, but just make sure that you supervise them because otherwise they might eat your house. The failure to understand doggy boredom equals total destructiveness from these dogs. Now these dogs are the most gentle dogs ever. So when I say their teeth are like piranhas, they're not like, like mean piranhas who will like do mean piranha things. They do those mean piranha things to your house, to your shoes, to your clothes, to your walls, your windowsills, your furniture, your surround sound speakers. They're, they're just crazy dogs. Be sure to walk your Sammy Ed a lot and be sure to crate train your Sammy Ed too. Now crates are beneficial if you're not going to be there for the day. Crates help protect your home from your Sammy Ed. If you think that you are up for getting a Sammy Ed, they are absolutely the most special breed ever. But I just wanna tell you that they can be destructive, so you have to follow Yetis and my advice for, for how to train these guys and how to work well with them. Oh, Yeti, we're all out of treats. Oh no. Be sure to check out our video up here for how to work well with a Sammy Ed and how to train a Sammy Ed. And we'll catch you next time.